Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, so it's a rainy day. I'm about to fly my Tiny Whoop, but I figured I would share with you my Tiny Whoop setup because I've had this thing for a while and I've been swapping parts out one by one until I found my favorite setup. And I'm not just talking about parts for the Tiny Whoop, I'm just talking about everything in general. Uh, I've, I've swapped everything out at least twice. As always, I'll just leave you links to all the parts that I'm talking about in the description below where you can find them there. And uh, I got this stuff through a variety of websites. I do remember that this case came off of Amazon. I like it because it's pretty tough. I can throw this inside my backpack whenever I go out flying. And uh, if I ever want to take a break from flying my normal size quads, I can break the tiny whoop out. And uh, with this case, I don't have to worry about anything getting squished or bent. Once you open it up, I really like this because uh, I've used both the Ishin and Inductrix frames. They're both the same size. Uh, so they both fit perfectly inside of here. Uh, it's really deep, like really deep. And uh, so, you know, it, because it's so deep, you don't have to worry about your uh, circular polarized, uh, like your clover leaves or your linear polarized antennas getting bent or damaged once you close it up. And we'll come right back to this. As far as the Tiny Whoop itself, I started off with the Ishin frame and I really did not like it. The reason for that is because uh, the front bolt hole for the flight controller doesn't line up. It's actually like up in here somewhere. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know why they ever did that. Uh, so I quickly switched to the actual Inductrix frame. I highly recommend this frame over the Ishin because, I mean for one it's only like five dollars more, but your flight controller will actually fit. And uh, the bottom part is better too if you you are using uh, these really thin batteries where with the Ishin frame it's a lot wider to fit like the other size one cell batteries and you have to use an adapter to make the thin batteries fit actually I have one of the adapters right here it looks like this and this thing is a pain in the butt the motors are the Strix Kinetic 56,000 RPM uh, you know motors they offer these in 6x15 millimeter as well as 7x16 millimeter and the KV is 15,300 these props uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this I'm just gonna let you read it but here it is I've tried a, a variety of props but really I think they're all the same for the most part I mean I, I mean they, they they work so no complaints here props do their job they make it fly I originally had the B brain flight controller because that seems to be what everyone's using uh, the problem I had with that is they only as far as I know they only offer it with the uh, the receiver for free sky or spectrum where I use the turnkey evolution transmitter so this would mean if I throw this thing inside my bag and I want to fly my tiny whoop out in the field I had to bring my Turnkey Evolution plus my Free Sky Tyrannus with me. And I, I really hated bringing a Tyrannus that's bigger than this entire case just to fly a Tiny Wolf. So now I am running, I don't even know what it's called, the F3 Evo Brush, something like that. Like I said, look in the description, you'll find it there. And they do offer a version for uh, the Turnkey transmitters. So now with my turn evolution, I can operate all my quads. I really did like this camera. This is the ReadyMate RC Cricket Cam, but they now have a V2 out. The V2 is actually smaller than this one, so I'm probably going to switch to that very soon. Uh, I, I mean, I don't have any problems with this. I'm just saying if they have a V2 out that's even smaller and more lightweight than this, then why not? Uh, but they're both pretty much the same. Uh, it's a camera and video transmitter built into one. You have the option of a, a cloverleaf antenna or a linear polarized. You get one button on top, uh, 40 channels between five bands. You can just press this button to easily you know, switch between bands and channels. It also comes with this uh, little 3D printed mount that bolts on top of the fly controller to hold it in place and then you just secure it with some rubber bands. Going back to this case, I uh, also like that it holds six of these little thin batteries. The batteries I'm using are the uh, Strix uh, 205 mAh 25C. As for battery charging, I don't know why this is in there because I meant to have this in there. 
This is the original Strix charger. This is the brand new one that came out a week or two ago. Both of them are almost exactly the same. You can charge six individual batteries like these by just plugging them on on top of this. It accepts the batteries with the 1.25 millimeter connector and the 2.0 millimeter connector. And they just kind of snap in just like that. As far as powering either one of these, you can use a wall charger that they also offer with a XC60 connector on the end. Just make sure you select uh, 3S on this selection switch if you are using the wall charger. And there you go. These boards, they're not parallel charging boards. They actually charge the batteries individually. So you don't have to worry about putting a completely drained battery on and then having a halfway drained battery and you know dealing with that having to wait and all this other stuff just put them all on it doesn't matter what the voltage is because it's not charging them together there it's individually your other option is going to be to uh, like if I'm in the field I have plenty of four cell batteries so I just put the selection switch to 4s and then just plug in the battery so there you go you got two different ways of doing it and it's also going to tell you the voltage of your battery so you don't accidentally over discharge your larger batteries. So like I was saying, the only difference between these two boards are this one will charge your batteries to 4.2 volts. This one will charge them to 4.35 volts. This is a high voltage charger. Technically you're supposed to use high voltage batteries with this charger, but I've been using the normal, you know, just normal batteries on it and haven't had any problems whatsoever and a lot of other guys have reported the same thing and that is my setup so I just like how you know compact everything is how easy it is to travel with this I can just you know throw all of this inside this one little pouch this little case and then throw this case inside my bag when I go flying and I've got everything with me and I don't even have to carry a charger with me because I just use a, a LiPo battery to charge these batteries. That's going to do it, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.